by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to whisper, He has gone to be the guest of the sin. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man, too, is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. May God bless the reading of his word. There's a wonderful verse uh, from the book of James in the New Testament that says, if you draw close to God, God will draw close to you. I love that verse. If you draw close to God, God will draw close to you. It's a great example of a typical verse from the book of James. It's full of lots of good common sense advice. And that's what I really appreciate the most when I'm reading scripture or uh, when I'm hearing about God, hearing God's word, or even when I'm hearing from other people. Uh, when I'm reading scripture, it gets to some really difficult theological point that's always very interesting. But I really love that practical advice. And this in particular, draw close to God, God will draw close to you. And that's important for us. I think it's very important because there are so many times in our lives when we don't feel close to God. We hardly ever name it that way. We hardly ever say, oh, I'm just not feeling very close to God at this moment. Uh, we say instead, I am, I am depressed. I am frustrated. I am angry. I am discontented. I am afraid. How often we have these feelings of really what we are saying in them. We're saying something very specific, but we're also saying something in general. We're not feeling close to God. And so here's the verse telling us, giving us one nice, simple piece of advice when we are find ourselves in some kind of difficulty, some kind of doubt. If you draw no, if you draw near to God, God will draw near to you. There's a great example of it. It's the, uh, it's the scripture that Ellie read for us today, the story of Zacchaeus. And we've all heard it many times. Let me, let me try to give you one thing about the story you don't know or you may not know. Uh, of course, you know Zacchaeus, and we read Zacchaeus lived in Jericho. The thing to remember, one thing you can remember is Jericho is one of the oldest inhabited cities in the world. In fact, it was inhabited uh, longer than just about any city that we know of. Uh, Abraham, uh, Abraham was called out of the city of Ur about 4,000 years ago. Well, the city of Jericho was around at least 2,000 years before that, maybe even longer. So this is a city that's been around a long time, and in Jesus' day, it was very prosperous. It was a beautiful city. It was a city full of palm trees and merchants. It was a lovely place to be, and... Uh, uh, they, they used to call it Eden by the Jordan. It was such a beautiful town. But let me tell you, it wasn't beautiful for Zacchaeus. No town is beautiful for people in that city no like it. You're going to decide to go back to, um, go back home, you think, go back to a place, I don't know, a place you grew up. But it's always so nice to be back there, but so, it's, so quickly it can get lonely. When, when all those people that were there when you were young have moved away and they're gone and they're not there anymore. It's a different place. So much of a place depends on the kind of people that you need, the kind of relationship you have with them. And Zacchaeus, we need to remember, of course, was hated. People despised him. And they not only despised him because 
that he was stealing from them, but they felt like he was a sinner. That what he was doing wasn't just dishonest, it was, it was sinful. And they didn't want to be around for that reason as well. And so, uh, of course, you hear about Jesus coming to town, and something about Jesus means that kid say, oh, I, want to, I want to see this guy. I want to see what he's all about. And because he was short, he climbed up in the tree. And I guess that's a great excuse for getting up in that tree, isn't it? That he was short, he couldn't see, and, uh, and he didn't want to go down and get into that crowd. And he didn't have to climb up the tree. He could have gone through the crowd, could have elbowed his way through. He didn't want to do that. He may have been scared to. A lot of collaborators with the Romans were killed in crowds. Somebody would come up behind them with a knife and, and stab them right in the middle of the crowd. So he may have been afraid to go through. But who wants to, any of us, who of any of us would want to go through, even if the people there didn't like us? Perhaps the case with Zacchaeus, he was despised. So he climbs up in that sycamore tree. And boy, the, the best part of this story is Jesus came right to him, right to him in that tree. You know, he had climbed up in this tree and it really represented all of the alienation from the people around him. You know, this tree for him, it wasn't just, you know, just a place, a platform to see from. It also represented that he didn't get along with people and they didn't get along with him and he didn't care. And it also, you know what that tree represented? It represented his greed too. Why was he up in that tree? Because he was greedy. He wanted lots of money. He wanted to steal from people. And he didn't care about his community. He didn't care about others. He didn't care that he was taking money out of other people's hands um, that, would, that would feed children and feed needy people. He didn't care. And so that tree represented all of that as well. And came Jesus. And Jesus walked right up to him. When we think about the tree that he was in, we can also think about the kind of trees we get into. Some, of, some we know take a permanent, uh, permanent place in those trees. Some people get up in a tree of their own resentment, their own anger, their own uh, unwillingness to be around, to be near, to be in community with others. And that just get up in that tree and boy, that's the, you, you don't want to be around other people. You want to be on your own. You don't want to admit that you need other people. You want to pretend like I can be up in this tree all by myself. And some of us spend years, some people spend years up in trees like that. But let's all admit that we're all up in those kind of trees from time to time. Something draws us up. You know, that old list again, we are angry. We are scared, frightened about something that is to come. We are discontent. We think life should be different. We think God should be treating us differently. We think we're not getting what we deserve. And all of this puts us up into this tree. It keeps us on our own. And here comes Christ then into the life of Zacchaeus and into our lives as well. Christ went right up to Zacchaeus and said, Zacchaeus, come down out of that tree. For I am coming to your house tonight. Zacchaeus let go. And scriptures say that right away he was filled, filled with joy. That's what happens to us in all these little trees that we get into. These trees of discontentment that we find and we climb up into it, we cling to those branches. But every week and every day, here comes Christ. Reaching out to us. For it may be true that uh, if we, we draw near to God, God will draw near to us. But so often it's also true that right in the middle of our own wilderness, that's when God reaches out to us. And to be open to that and to be not only willing to see God and to understand that it's Christ before us offering us a way down, we have to be willing to respond to that. But sometimes it takes going through a wilderness to get to the promised land. Remember the story about Elijah in the Old Testament where he was in the wilderness and he was in a cave? And there he was. He was in just as far from people as he could possibly be. And it was in that moment that he heard the still, small voice of God. Think about Saul of Tarsus before he became the Apostle Paul. And there he was walking along the road to Damascus, and he was filled with anger, and he was filled with hatred for this group of Christians, and he was going to do something to put them in jail. 
And that's when Christ reaches out to him. That's when he is blinded by the light. That's when he is called in a new direction. Sometimes it's right in the wilderness that we are called back again. And it's so simple. Right? That's it. Let go. Jump down. Get back in community. Do the things you need to do to be in contact with others and, and to draw closer to God as well. And it is so simple that it's never easy. It is never easy. You think it was easy for Zacchaeus in the midst of that crowd, even with Jesus right there, to come down out of that tree and wave to that crowd? stand next to Jesus and then feel that joy. That was not easy to think to do. That took courage. It takes courage for us as well. Because I'll tell you, we get up in that tree, the resentment of anger, we like it. We decorate it. We make it into a little home and it, and it feels good for us to be up in there. But Christ does come to us. He offers us a way down. And when we get down, you know what we can do? We can study the Bible. We can go to worship. We can serve other people. There are so many ways that we then can work to draw close to God. And through it all, we can remember God's promise that He will draw close to us. Well, I don't want this, these words, this message just to go flying up in the air. I want it to come right into your heart. I want you to think about it. That tree that you're up in right now, and how easy it will be to accept Christ's invitation to let loose, to come down. And instead of hanging on to some resentment or anger from the past, to be able to feel fully in the presence of God, in the presence of God's Son, Jesus Christ, and to hear in that moment. God's word saying to us, welcome back. Welcome back again. Let's bow. Loving God, we do give thanks for all the blessings that you give us, Lord. We give thanks for all the opportunities you give us to draw closer to you. Lord, help us to see those chances we have here in this week ahead. All the opportunities we will have to draw closer to you in this week ahead, feel closer for just a moment, but also feel closer progressively closer as days go by. For all these things we ask in your son's name. Amen.